the background ready. But I will prove that everything in the Bible already happened. That Jesus already returned. The rapture already happened. There's not one single thing in the Bible that we are waiting for. Jesus Christ said the simple things. That generation would not pass until all these things were fulfilled. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm just waiting for people to come into the live and then I'll start answering questions. But Jesus said that generation wouldn't pass until all things were fulfilled, and he meant it. The book of Revelation, everything in the book of Revelation already happened. There is a deception today, but that deception is Christianity. <clears throat> that is why the most powerful men in the world created it, made the Bible, swear on the Bible before they can rule. And every Christian knows that there's a deception, but what they don't realize is that Christianity is that deception. We should be living for God today, not Jesus. Everything in the Bible already happened, Jesus Christ already returned, the rapture already happened. All of these things happen in history. None of it is going to happen today. Not the biblical end, anyway. We might be at the, we're at the end of another age, but it's not the biblical end. Everything in the Bible took place in the first century. Within 40 years of Jesus Christ prophesying, everything that he said happened. The temple was destroyed. The believers fled into the wilderness. The Jews fell by the edge of the sword. They were led away captive. The armies came and trampled the city underfoot for 42 months until the times of the Gentiles were fulfilled. After the believers were in the wilderness for 1,260 days, the rapture happened. It's not some witnessed event like you see on the Left Behind series in 2023, <laughs> or in the year 2000. But what happened in the Bible was they fled Judea, not the entire world. They did flee Judea. There would be great wrath upon that people, the Jews, and they would fall by the edge of the sword and be led away captive into all nations. We've been completely duped by the Catholics and Protestants, and the presidents swearing on the Bible, 40-some thousand denominations, and all these people claiming the Holy Spirit. You don't even know where to look today. And nobody has any idea where to look. Uh, yeah, that's what they say, Karen. That's what everybody says. You guys, why don't you scroll through TikTok and listen to some other Christian, and scroll to the next video and listen to another one, and scroll to the next one and listen to another one. Keep listening to them. You have no idea where to even look. It's because it already happened. It's not fiction. It just already happened. Jesus Christ said that generation wouldn't pass until all those things were fulfilled. We're at the end of another age, King of Salem. Uh, he said, so tell me what's happening now. What's your theory on what's happening now? We're at the end of another age. But it's going to destroy Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. Jesus said, some of you standing here will not taste death until you see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Some of them didn't die before Jesus returned. His brother James said the coming of the Lord drew nigh 2,000 years ago. I don't believe Christians today that say the coming of the Lord is nigh. I believe James that said the coming of the Lord was nigh back then. And Peter that said the end of all things was at hand and told people 2,000 years ago to watch and be sober. For they were looking and hasting to the day of God. All these things already happened. <clears throat> the marriage supper of the Lamb already happened. And the marriage supper of the Lamb, the door was shut. And then the Lord God omnipotent began to reign. I was answering a, another person's question on the marriage supper there. That's what it said in Matthew 25. At the marriage supper, the door was shut. What the Bible actually says is, Romans 9.28 said Jesus Christ would make a short work on the earth and deliver, and then deliver everything back to the Father. That's 1 Corinthians 15. So Jesus Christ came and did a short work on the earth, and then he delivered everything back to God. The gospel was already preached. The Bible says that the gospel was already preached to every creature back then. The book of Revelation was written to seven churches in Asia that don't exist anymore. That's why John was right off the uh, right on the Isle of Patmos off the coast of Asia Minor, because all those things took place back then. He wrote to those churches. They were told to hold that fast, what they had already, until he came. John was told, write the things which must shortly come to pass. He said he was their fellow brother and companion in tribulation. Those that pierced Jesus would see him and wail because of him. I'm quoting a bunch of scriptures. You guys are just saying, stop, you're false, you don't know. That's all you're saying. But I'm telling you things that the Bible says. You just can't do it. <clears throat> Tell me which prophecy hasn't been fulfilled. What are you still waiting on? Why are Christians waiting for a new temple to be built whenever Jesus said not one stone in that temple would stand upon another? Why are you still waiting for all the things that already happened to happen again? Now you're clearly not in the millennial reign. 
Jesus Christ did a short work on the earth. There was no word for, that word did not mean millennium back then. The gospel was preached in all the world. It already happened, George Figgs. Jesus said once the gospel was preached in all nations for a witness, or for a witness unto all nations, then the end would come. Paul said, have they not heard? Verily they've heard. They're sound not unto all the world and for a witness to the ends of the earth. He said, the gospel which you have heard, which has been preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. So what does the Bible mean whenever it says to every nation? Why did the gospel have to be preached to every nation? It tells you in Acts chapter 2. On the day of Pentecost, there were Jews, devout men, dwelling at Jerusalem from every nation under heaven. From Crete, Pamphylia, Arabia, Arabia, strangers in Rome, Syria. After Israel was creating a nation, this generation shall not pass. That's not what he said. Jesus looked at those people in their faces and said whenever they saw these things, to get out of Judea, flee into the mountains, and they did. He said whenever they saw him coming in the clouds, they saw him. They heard of wars and rumors of wars. They were delivered up to councils. That already happened. Israel became a nation again, fulfilling that prophecy before Jesus was even born. In 63 BC, General Pompey ousted everybody and allowed Israel to get their land back. Literally said they were a nation back then, a holy nation, a royal priesthood, a chosen generation. And it said that the Romans would destroy them. That is John chapter 11, verse 48. <clears throat> every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Go read Zechariah chapter 12. That's what that was talking about, and it was talking about all in Israel. The book of Revelation was written to Jews, nobody else. Said so you have tried them who say that they are Jews and are not, and have found them liars. The Jews had the law, the Gentiles did not have the law or the prophets. Gentiles having not the law do by nature the things contained in the law. They didn't have the law and the prophets. Now, if you read Zechariah <clears throat> talking about piercing him and those that pierced him and wailing because of him, it said the house of David and their wives and families apart and the house of Levi and their wives and families apart and all the tribes of the earth would mourn, talking about Jerusalem, not the entire planet. That's why he said flee Judea. The apocalypse already happened, yes. Yes, the rapture did happen. The believers fled into the wilderness for 1,260 days. They were never heard from again. It happened in history. Armageddon already happened. It just meant Hill of Megiddo. <clears throat> Armageddon means Hill of Megiddo. It was about a siege that happened between Egypt and the Canaanites, right up above Israel. And that's what they did to Jerusalem. Just like Jesus said, they sieged them, built a wall around them, kept them in on every side, like Jesus said. Whenever Jesus walked up to that city, he wept over that city, not a future city. He said, since they didn't know the time of their visitation, that the armies were going to come, can pass them round, cast a trench about them, keep them in on every side, and lay them even with the ground and their children within them, and behold, their house was left unto them desolate. It's exactly what the Romans did in their lifetime. They came and besieged them. Armageddon, Armageddon, Hill of Megiddo. Nobody knows this because the Catholic Church and the Protestant Church. I'm not saying anything outside of the Bible. I'm saying stuff against this false doctrine of Christianity today. True Christianity ended in 70 AD. Everything in the Bible already happened. And then wicked men took over Jesus' name and made this religion that we have today. Jesus' return is the first resurrection. Yes, that already happened. Jesus' return was in 66 AD. Whenever they saw the armies came, they fled Judea, and they looked up, for their redemption drew nigh. And then Jesus Christ came back in the clouds with all of his holy angels, and the dead in Christ rose with them. <clears throat> yeah, the dead rose and got their holy body, yes. And they've been in New Jerusalem for 1,953 years. Revelation chapter 20, verse 5, which, what does that say? Revelation 20 is talking about, I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, and adorned for a bride, adorned as a bride for a husband, something like that. And then God would walk in them, be in them. They would not teach every man their neighbor, saying, Know the Lord, for he would be in them from the least to the greatest. And he wiped all tears away from their eyes. No more crying. That's what Revelation, no, that's Revelation 21, isn't it? You're talking about 20, where Satan was bound. And that happened in 66 AD. So then what is the system we're living in now? We should be listening to God today. Think about the system you're li living in now, redneck golfer. 
Who swears on the Bible? Good men. Who made the Bible? Good men. What's the religion with the most confusion in it? Christianity. God is about to judge Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. That's what's actually happening. They're all going to fight over the Temple Mount. The Christians and the Jews want to destroy the Alaska and the Dome of the Rock so they can build a new temple. And they think the end is going to come. And the Muslims think that's where Muhammad ascended up to heaven and came back with their his prayers and stuff. <clears throat> There's going to be a war because of it. Where is the new heaven and new earth? There was no word earth, Rob Astor. The word was land back then. The word was land, and they were looking for a new heavenly land. It actually never said that his kingdom would be on this earth. It said the opposite. His kingdom was not of this world. He said, A heavenly Jerusalem, a mount that cannot be touched. If the earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, they had a home eternal in the heavens. If they were persecuted on the earth, great was their reward in heaven. In the ages to come, they would have eternal life. Jesus ascended up to heaven to prepare a place for them, that so where he was, they could be with him also. In his father's house, there were many mansions. He ascended up to heaven. They said they had here no continuing city, but they looked for a better hope in heavenly. As they had borne the earthly, so would they bear the heavenly. They've been in heaven for 1,953 years in the New Jerusalem. They have been in New Jerusalem the whole time. I live a life of deception, that coming from a Christian. Are you Baptist, Pentecostal, Lutheran, Episcopalian? What are you, Catholic? No, you're one of many millions that are divided into doctrines from those denominations who thinks you can just sit at home and know Jesus personally, which the Bible never said. That's who you are, and you're telling me that I'm deceived. It's crazy. Yeah, the ships were destroyed. That all happened, but it was talking about a war in Israel and in Judea. Said flee Judea, not the whole world. Said the Jews would be led away captive into all nations, and they were. There were still nations to be led away captive to. If you read Joel chapter 2, it said a heathen army came on the great day of God Almighty, and that they were the strongest army that had ever been, and remained the strongest army to the years of many generations after. There were still armies after. There was still the earth after. You would be beheaded if we talk about Christianity when the time comes. No, that already happened back then. Why do you diminish their tribulation? You act like you're the one that's going to go through tribulation because you're supporting an Israel that doesn't even believe in Jesus. You're supporting a new temple being built after Jesus said not one stone in that temple would stand upon another. The truth is, the real Christians went through great tribulation. Under the fifth seal, they were waiting under the altar in Jerusalem. Crying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, do you not avenge our blood on them which dwell in the land? He gave them white robes and told them to wait a little while longer. John said, Who are these arrayed in white robes? So who were the dead in Christ that were waiting under the altar? Who were these arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? Said, These were they which came out of great tribulation and loved not their lives unto the death. The great tribulation already happened. It happened while the temple was still standing. As a matter of fact, the reason that John was on the Isle of Patmos is because the tribulation had begun. He said he was their fellow brother and companion in tribulation. That's why he was on the Isle of Patmos. It was a prison island where Nero sent him because a fire burned Rome down about 70% of Rome in 64 AD. Nero blamed it on the Christians and he went out hunting all the Christians. The end times are near. Why, why would I believe you, Trevor? I believe James and Peter and Jesus. Is that okay? I believe what the Bible says. I believe what James said. Paul, Peter. I don't believe you. They were in the end times. They were already in the end times. It said that God spoke to the prophets in diverse manners, in sun-dry times, uh, through the prophets. But in those last times, he had spoken unto them by his Son. It said, Jesus Christ appeared once in the end of the world. Whenever they received the Holy Spirit, they said, This is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel, that in the last days he would pour out his Spirit. They were living in the last days. Paul wrote to the Corinthians and said, This I say, brethren, the time is short. Let those who have wives act like you have none. They weren't even supposed to care about their marriages because the time was so short. Why? Because yet a little while, and he who tarried would not tarry, but would come. Because the night was far spent, the day was at hand. They were looking and hasting to the day of God, is what Peter said. The end of all things was at hand. James said the coming of the Lord draws nigh. You guys are looking for antichrists. John said, little children, it is the last hour. You've heard that antichrist shall come. Even now are there many antichrists. Hereby know we 
that it is the last hour. You're looking for a man of sin to come and sit in a temple because you're reading Thessalonians. That was, that it was the temple was still standing when Thessalonians was written, and he said the mystery of iniquity doth already work, because it was going to happen back then. That's why Paul told the Thessalonians, May God preserve your whole bodies, souls, and spirits until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, You are not in darkness, brethren, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Paul told the Corinthians that they would not all sleep, but some of them would be changed in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. Because it already happened. What was written to the Thessalonians was not to us. It was written to the Thessalonians. Or are you saying that it wasn't to the Thessalonians? Is that what you're trying to say? It was written to the Thessalonians. <clears throat> and what did Paul tell them? We don't even have the information about the man of sin. It's not for us. It wasn't important to us. Paul told them about the man of sin. He said, Remember you not, brethren, whenever I was yet with you? I told you these things. So now you know what withholds before the man of sin can be revealed? We don't have that information. He, he told them that face to face. It's not written down for us. And then in their lifetime, a man who hated Jesus, who other people called the Messiah, sat in the temple, and was destroyed. He sat in the temple, killed 12,000 of the priests in the council, stained the floor with his, their blood, blasphemed God's name, tabernacle, and those that dwelled in heaven. Great signs happened back then. And he got most of Jerusalem to turn against Rome and fight the Romans and be destroyed. All of that happened. I'm, and there's nothing I said that wasn't true. Less sorrow. Tell me what I said. Where's the shining temple of God on earth? What are you talking about? Revelation 21 said that there is no temple in New Jerusalem. It said there is no temple for God and the Lamb or the temple of it. It literally said I saw no temple there. So why are you looking for another temple? Whenever Jesus said not one stone in that temple would stand upon another. What Jesus did is eternal. What Jesus did was the most amazing thing that ever happened in this world, yes. But he did a short work and delivered everything back to the Father and became subject to the Father so that God could be all in all. Once the marriage supper came, the door was shut. That's what it said in Matthew 25. In Revelation 19, it said, The Lord God omnipotent reigns because the marriage supper of the Lamb had come. So Jesus did his work from Adam until he returned. All the people who believed in him, including those in the grave, went up to a place called New Jerusalem. And they've been there the whole time. That's why the dead in Christ were waiting under the altar, because they knew that Jesus would descend from heaven and destroy the man of sin that sat in the temple. So they were waiting under the altar. I'm setting things straight. I'm not confusing you guys. Just scroll through Christian TikTok. That'll confuse you. You're going to be born for ages and ages to come. Like Solomon said, world... Uh, that generations come and generations go, but the earth abides forever. You will be down here. All they do is throw verses at you, believing it is for today. Yeah, I know, Kelly. Thank you. The Antichrist is right in front of you. Who is it? And I'm worshiping him. Who's that? Oh, Donald Trump. Is that who you think? Well, whenever nothing happens with that 77-year-old man, that isn't even going to be very healthy... If he's alive in the next 10 years, you let me know, okay? And then you'll move on to the next president being the Antichrist. You sure it's not uh, Kennedy? You sure? You sure? You sure it's not the new Kennedy? Your body is the temple Jesus spoke of. No, it's not. Jesus said not one stone in the temple would stand upon another. Jesus walked out of the temple. He said, behold, their house was left unto them desolate. <laughs> He wasn't talking about that. There is one place in John where he was talking about his body. It said that he would raise, he would rebuild the temple in three days. And he said, this spoke he of his body. But whenever he walked out of that temple, and the disciples showed him the temple, and said, Jesus, do you see this temple adorned with goodly stones? And Jesus said, yeah, not one stone in this temple shall be left upon another. He wasn't talking about his body then. He was talking about that temple. Ignore what signs? There's tons of signs, but they're not in the Bible. All the things in the Bible already happen. All the fires, everything, the water becoming bitter, all those things happen in the first century around Judea, where the war actually happened. 
Jesus taught that people would see and ignore. Jesus taught that people would see and ignore. What do you... Okay. Not all yet. Then your logic, it's useless to pray at all. No, man. I'm not on here for no reason. You should have a relationship with God. Jesus finished his work. I'm not saying you have no hope. I'm saying you have God Almighty. You can go straight to heaven whenever you die. You don't have to wait in your grave. you got to have a relationship with God. Because Jesus' work has been done. The only work you've had for the last 2,000 years under this Jesus name is the Catholics and Protestants. Genocide, war, and tyranny. Confusion, division. Jesus is not your hope. God is your hope. Jesus finished his work. God is the door today. The increase of earthquakes, data shows it. There was tons of earthquakes back then, Jessica Swanson. You need to look up the siege of Jerusalem. It literally said in history that there were earthquakes so great that they not only shook the earth, but the entire heavens. And they destroyed whole cities. They saw wars and rumors of wars. Oh, thanks, Omer Bev. Yes, I believe in Jesus. You must not have been here very long. Just tuning in, what is your theory? My theory is that everything in the Bible already happened, Jesus already returned, the book of Revelation already happened, he delivered everything back to the Father, and we should be living for the Father today, not this fake Christianity. The Euphrates River drying up is absolutely laughable, Josh. Everybody's talking about it. But the Euphrates River dried up back then. We don't need rivers to dry today. No armies have to cross a river on dry land. The kings of the east do not have to cross on dry land. They don't come to rivers today and say, oh my god, how are we going to get across this river? They can build prefab mechanical bridges in the army and it takes them about 15 minutes to make one big enough for tanks to go across. And we have jets, you know. Nobody's going to siege a city. Nobody's going to bring back crucifixion. Nobody's going to bring back sacrifice. The daily sacrifice was taken away in 66 AD whenever wicked men took over the temple. And they stop sacrificing daily. And it ha it'll never be back. These things aren't for us today. Jesus was amazing, but it already happened. Dude, do you realize that anyone that preaches that Christ is not the way is false? And you're telling me that most of the people that preach Christ is the way, you believe they're true? You scroll through TikTok and you think they're true. You think the presidents are true, they preach Christ is the way. You think all those denominations are true? Jesus Christ was the way, the truth, and the life. He absolutely was. Yes, the book of Revelation already happened, Jessica Swanson. I'm going to answer this and then catch up on comment. Uh, how can you say that the book of Revelation didn't happen whenever it was written to seven churches in Asia that don't exist anymore? What did he tell the churches? He said, hold that fast what you have already until I come. Behold, I'm coming quickly, and my reward is with me. Was Antipas his faithful martyr that was slain among you? No. He was slain among those churches. He actually lived back then. He was slain among the churches. And they were told, hold that fast what you have already until I come. That happened to them. John was told, write the things which must shortly come to pass. He said, blessed were those churches that read those things, for the time was at hand. He said, seal not the words of the book of that prophecy, for the time was at hand. Um, John was their fellow brother and companion in tribulation. Those that pierced him would see him and wail because of him. There were seven kings on the beast. Five had already fallen. One was ruling then, and the next one would rule for a short time. Jesus sent his angel to testify unto the churches that things must shortly be done. Uh, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Behold, I'm coming quickly. It already happened. Exactly, Drew King. Come quickly, not 2,000 years later. Yeah, the seven trumpets already happened, and that was just talking about everything that happened in Israel back then. The grass was burnt, um, there was tons of fires in Israel from the Romans in the war. The waters were made bitter, they dammed rivers with dead bodies. Uh, the water was made bitter from all the dead bodies. The historians even believe that cholera and possibly the bubonic plague went through back then. Well, all that stuff already happened. I don't know about you, but it don't look like the universe has been thrown in the lake of fire. The Bible doesn't say anything about the universe being thrown into the lake of fire. It says nothing about the universe anywhere. Or the new earth with God ruling. That doesn't say that either, I'm sorry. Hey, what's up, Nostradamian? There's one, there's one trumpet left. There was one trumpet left 
throughout all of history so far. <laughs> That's what they keep saying. Everything happened and then it just paused all of a sudden for 2,000 years. No, hell only lasted for 40 years. Hell was thrown into the lake of fire. That's why there's no... All that meant was Gehenna, which was a trash dump outside of Israel where they burned the dead bodies. Sometimes it was translated as grave, or hell, a grave was translated as hell. There's no grave today. You can go straight to heaven whenever you die. Mm. Yes, it does. You're just lying. No, it really doesn't say that God would throw the universe into the lake of fire. It doesn't say that. Jesus would return in a generation when Israel was a nation. No, Israel was a nation back then. John 11:48. If they let Jesus alone, the Romans would come and take away both their place and their nation. The centurion, they told him that the centurion deserved Jesus to go and heal his servant because he loved their nation. So they were a holy nation, chosen generation, a royal priesthood. They were a nation back then. It does say that he would create a new heaven and a new earth. Do you know when it said he would do that? It said not one single jot or tittle. A jot is a little mark above a letter, you know, or a tittle, whatever. Is a little mark above a letter. So not, not one jot or tittle would pass from the law until heaven and earth passed. There's no more sacrifice today. That temple was destroyed. Many jots and tittles passed from the law. That means there's a new heaven and a new earth. So what's the problem here? The problem's translation. It never said earth back then. They didn't even know what the whole earth was. The original word was land, and they were looking for a new land in heaven, not down here on earth. They went up into heaven, a heavenly Jerusalem, a mount that cannot be touched. If the earthly house of that tabernacle were dissolved, they had a home eternal in the heavens. If they received persecution on the earth, great was their reward in heaven. Jesus Christ ascended up to heaven to prepare a place for them, that so where he was, they could be with him also, in heaven. They had here no continuing city, but they looked for a better hope in heavenly. What Jesus actually said is that false Christs, anybody who's saying that Jesus would come back to the earth, you believe in false Christs. That's what Jesus said. He said that the kingdom of heaven came without observation. You couldn't say, look, it's here, lo, it's there. And he said, and if anybody tells you that Christ is back on earth, if he's in his secret chambers, don't believe them. And if he's in the desert, don't believe them. Don't go after them. What Christians believe today come from a fake Israel. It's lost. This makes you laugh. Caught up in the clouds. No, I'm not a Christian. Christianity ended in 70 AD. We should be living for God today. Looking for an actual comment. After the millennial reign, the reign of Christ already happened. What translation are you understanding? It's not the right one. I read the King James Version mostly. Uh, here we go. He's going to tell us it's all a mistranslation. Well, here, why don't you tell me some stuff, Justin? Did Jesus say that generation wouldn't pass until all things were fulfilled? Did he say some of them standing there would not taste death until they saw the Son of Man coming in his kingdom? Did he say they will not have gone over all the cities in Israel before the Son of Man be come? Did he tell the daughters of Jerusalem and their children to weep for themselves because they would cry for the mountains and rocks to fall on them and cover them? All those things already happen. Did everything that Jesus Christ prophesied about already happen? Did the believers flee into the wilderness? Was the temple destroyed and left desolate? Did the armies come to Jerusalem and trample the city for 42 months exactly until the temple was destroyed? All those things happened. Did the Jews fall by the edge of the sword? Were they led away captive in all nations? Was John the Baptist Elijah, like Jesus said, that came before the great and terrible day of the Lord? Did he make straight the paths of the Lord and say the kingdom of heaven was near or at hand? Did James say the uh, coming of the Lord drew nigh? They were living in the last days. James said, Go to now, you rich men. He used the word now. Go to now, you rich men. Weep and howl for your miseries. For you have heaped up treasures for the last days. And anybody who says there's not translation problems in the Bible has a big problem. People weren't going to the library and checking out books back then. But 180 times or 200 and some times, the Bible uses the word book. Why? Instead of the word ecclesia, it uses the word church. Why? You're saying there's no mistranslations in the Bible? Why is sin still in the world? There is no sin, actually. There's only good and evil. Good and evil existed before sin. 
How could they have a tree of knowledge of good and evil? They didn't want mankind to become like them, who already knew good and evil. So good and evil existed before sin ever existed. Satan brought sin into the world, and because of sin, the grave happened. So nobody could enter heaven. So Jesus came and destroyed the grave and sin, so that we could enter heaven. It never said that he would end evil. It said he would end sin. Evil existed before sin. Evil exists after sin. Jesus just ended sin and the punishment for it, which was the grave. He said, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? <sighs> Hebrew letters are symbols and pictures. We reading English. Yeah, but you can still tell it already happened, Brandon and Joel. Evil is not polar opposite of good. Yes, it is. Yeah, God is the opposite of Satan. Yeah. I don't know why you're trying to deceive. I'm not, man. I'm trying to get people into heaven. I'm trying to get people to go into heaven and know God today. I love it whenever Christians call me a deceiver, man. Just scroll through those Christian lives. They all think they have the Holy Spirit. They all claim that every president is the Antichrist. And then it doesn't happen. They claim the next president's the Antichrist. I'm not the deceiver. I'm telling you what the Bible actually says. So we don't go to heaven? Yeah, you can go to heaven. Absolutely. You don't go to New Jerusalem. You go to a different city, but you can definitely go to heaven. Only way to heaven was Jesus. See, you're not living reconciled. Jesus had the gospel of reconciliation. The gospel was only preached for one generation. Psalms 22 said a seed would serve him. It would be accounted to the Lord for a generation. They would come and declare his righteousness. Peter said they were a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. That they should show forth the praise of him that brought them out of darkness into this marvelous light. Who shall declare his generation, for his life is taken from the earth. Paul said the gospel was preached in all the world back then. He said, have they not heard? Verily they heard. Their sound went out into all the world and for a witness to the ends of the earth. That already happened. You get to heaven through God today. You obviously cannot get to heaven through Christianity. Which religion, which part of Christianity are you going to pick? You know, there's at least 40,000 different options. There's way more than that, but there's at least 40,000 denominations with a name. So that's like playing Vegas, you know. Those don't seem like very good odds. <clears throat> well, thank you, uh, Nick says it happened. Who am I to question God Almighty? What does that mean? Are you God Almighty? Because I'm telling you what the Bible says. Yeah, I'm not saying don't fear the Lord. I'm saying you should fear God. Don't understand. Didn't Christ say no man knows the day or the hour? Yeah, he said that. But he told them they knew the seasons. And he said whenever they began to see those things come to pass, look up for their redemption drew nigh and flee Judea. And they did that in history. He told the Thessalonians, You are not in darkness, brethren, that that day should overtake you as a thief. So they weren't going to be overtaken as a thief. And that was written to them, not to us. All can only come to the Father. No, that was true. God delivered all things to Christ. If you lived in the first century, you would have to be a Christian to go to heaven. Absolutely. But now you can't go to heaven if you are a Christian. His work is finished. Jesus has a new name in heaven. That's Revelation 3.12. He has a new name that nobody knows. He's been in heaven the whole time. He rules over the house of Jacob in an everlasting kingdom. Eighteen forty four, what are you talking about? It already happened, then that means we're stuck with these so called Christians. Yeah, and Muslims and Jews. Explain the tribulation to come. There isn't a biblical tribulation to come. The tribulation already happened back then. Nero burned Christians. He hunted them door to door, killed anybody who harbored them and didn't give them up. That really happened. He killed tens of thousands of them. They went out and burned them for candlelight in his courtyard while he was having dinner parties. Uh, he tied fetters to their feet and cast them into the sea. He put fresh dead bloody animal skins on them and fed them to dogs. Ripped them apart for sport. That happened back then. The earth is promised to Jacob. No, the land. The new land of Israel was promised to Jacob, and that's what they have. Whenever old Jerusalem on earth was destroyed, they went into a new heavenly Jerusalem, not down here on the earth. 
If it was going to be down here on earth, Jesus would have just stayed on the earth. He wouldn't have went up to heaven. You guys are trying to bring God down to the earth instead of trying to, trying to bring people up to God. Uh, yeah, I don't know how to say your name, Gulo. Um, in a nutshell, everything in the Bible already happened. Jesus Christ did a short work on the earth and delivered everything back to the Father. He ended sin in the grave, so we have access to God today. After Jesus finished his work and everything in the Bible took place, wicked men who didn't make it, that were left behind, said, Oh my God, Jesus was the Messiah. And they took over Jesus' name, and they made a religion that is the exact opposite of what real Christianity was. Real Christianity was small, it was few, it was persecuted, it wasn't in government, didn't have any money, they weren't making provisions for their flesh because the time was so short. They knew that they were getting off this planet and they were willing and wanting to die. This Christianity for the last 2,000 years has killed with the sword. They've had genocide and tyranny, that's how they spread it. Wicked men, some of the most wicked men in the world, made the Bible, strangled his own wife in the bathtub. That's how they pushed Christianity. Luther had the Anabaptists drowned because they thought they could be baptized whenever they were older. Calvin had other theologians burned at the stake. King Henry chopped off his wife's heads and hung them on London Bridge. And that's why people call the Bible the Word of God is because of King Henry. The presidents of the United States swear on the Bible. They come over here to Jamestown in America and wipe out 90 million natives between North and South America. And they do it with the Holy Spirit in the name of Christ. Christianity is the deception today. It's the biggest religion with the least persecution, the biggest armies, the most money, the most powerful governments. Real Christianity ended in 70 AD. The word rapture is only a couple hundred years old, but the catching away is in the Bible. They were caught up to meet them in the clouds, and so they would ever be with the Lord. And they would not all sleep, but they would be changed. Answering Dano's question. Where's my evidence? Everywhere in the Bible. Every place. Christianity is the most persecuted religion. You have the most powerful people in the world. <laughs> the biggest religion in the world is the most persecuted with the biggest armies and army bases in almost every country in the world. It's crazy. You guys think you're the most persecuted. When's the last time somebody wiped out 300,000 Christians in a fell swoop after swearing on their book? You know, it's crazy. Using emotion, you should be more emotional than you know, man. And God's not okay. The Muslims are just as bad as Christians. They've rejected everything that Jesus Christ did. They've gone back to the law. They don't even think Jesus was the Son of God. They're no better. <clears throat> Indoctrination runs deep. It does. It does. Get out of the churches. Yeah, religion causes division. That happens. We are living at the end of another 2,000 years. Everything in the Bible was fulfilled 2,000 years ago. Whenever the armies came to Jerusalem, Luke 21, Jesus said, These be the days of vengeance, whenever all things written shall be fulfilled. That happened back then. Jerusalem was mystery Babylon. There's no way around it. Read Acts. Peter lived in, Jer in Jerusalem his whole life, after his conversion, after he received the Holy Spirit. And in his epistle, he said, the church in Babylon salutes them. They knew that Jerusalem was mystery Babylon. She was left desolate in one hour, like Jesus said. Her temple was left desolate. Her precious stones were thrown down, like Jesus said. Her goodly stones, would not one of them would stand upon another. In her was found all the blood of the prophets and the saints that were slain upon the earth. Like Jesus said, a prophet cannot die outside of Jerusalem. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee. All the blood of all the prophets from Abel until Zechariah shall be required at the hands of this generation. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. And they would not see him again until they said, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. All that stuff happened in their generation. Mystery Babylon was destroyed. It was Jerusalem in the first century. <clears throat> I do hear and receive from God, and I'm telling other people to do the same. You hear and receive from a fake church and a fake Jesus. 
And I'm telling people not to do that. Yeah, Christians don't have much to back up their belief today. Oh, thank you, uh, Guello. I don't know how to say your name. Sorry, I'm saying it wrong. They spread the word of God blindly. Jesus will come like a thief in the night. That already happened. But he told the Thessalonians, You are not in darkness, brethren, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Because they wouldn't be overtaken as a thief. Just like the Corinthians. Not all of them would sleep. Some of them would still be alive whenever Jesus returned. Also to the Thessalonians, Paul said, May God preserve their whole bodies, souls, and spirits until the coming of the Lord. They were still alive whenever he came back. That temple was still standing whenever that was written about the man of sin. And then a wicked man, man came and sat in the temple, and millions of Jews were killed. And the Romans built a wall around Jerusalem, and the blood was so high that it came out of the wall like a wine press and quenched the fires in Israel. That happened in history. I really haven't given any prophecies yet, and you guys call me a false prophet. What you're actually saying is Jesus was a false prophet, because I'm just telling you what he said already happened. Where's Chorazan and Bethsaida? Those are cities in Israel. They were cities in Israel. Jesus said, Woe unto you, Chorazan, woe unto you, Bethsaida, for in the day of judgment they would receive great wrath. Chorazan and Bethsaida are buried. Archaeologists don't even know for sure if they know where they were. That's how buried they are. Because the wrath already came. What we're heading for is another great deception. And this is me prophesying now. You can call me a false prophet if you don't believe me. Because now I am giving you a prophecy. We're heading for another deception. Everybody's going to think it's the end of the world. The Jews, Christians, and Muslims are going to fight over the Temple Mount. And it's going to end this Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. They're all going to fight. They're all going to think it's the end. The Jews are going to think that the real Messiah is coming because they don't believe in Jesus, which is crazy. You know, they haven't had anything since the time of Christ, and they don't believe in Jesus. It's crazy. Uh, the Muslims are going to go to jihad whenever they try to destroy the Dome of the Rock and the Alaska that sit on top of the Temple Mount so they can build a new temple. And the Christians are going to think that the Antichrist is coming and the Mark of the Beast is coming. And they're going to think all the fires and the plagues and the viruses are biblical. But then what's going to happen is, nothing they believe is going to come to pass. There's not going to be a rapture. There's not going to be an Antichrist. There's not going to be a new temple. Instead, the Temple Mount's going to be destroyed. And after 2,000 years of war, tyranny, and genocide by the Jews and the Muslims, they're not going to rule the world anymore, and they're going to be a thing of history. That's what's happening over the next 100 years. <clears throat> They're not building a new temple. They always say that. They've said that since I was born. It's, well, since I can remember. Whenever I was younger, they said, Oh, they got the heifers in Israel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they said that. Look up how many times they name a Messiah. Every three years, Israel names a new Messiah. They always say they're rebuilding the temple. They're not. The truth for salvation. All right, I'll get into this. This loses most people. But Jesus ended sin. There's no more sin. Don't judge people for the flesh. Don't judge people for what they eat, drink, wear, who they sleep with, what they watch, what they listen to. That's all over. And if you don't judge people for that, then you won't do anything evil. And you can always be honest. You can say, yes, I was looking at that girl. Yes, I do think your best friend is more attractive than you. You know, you can stop lying and hiding all the time. You can be honest. Sin is over. That's why there's no grave. Whenever you die, you'll see a light. Nobody saw a light before Jesus returned, but now you see a light whenever you die, because he ended sin and we're no longer cut off from heaven. You can go straight into heaven, you don't have to wait in your grave or under the altar in Jerusalem. <clears throat> there is no more sin today. The Bible information, where do I get that? That's easy. I get that from the Bible. Information today, you have to be honest in your everyday life. Always be honest. If you've cheated on somebody, you got to go back and tell them, or you'll never be an honest person. If you've if you've lied, you got to go back and fix it. You just have to, and then you got to stop lying. You got to start worshiping God. Realize that God is the door, not these deceptive Christian religions. Not your president swearing on what people call the Word of God. You couldn't even take communion in the apostles' day. If you took it unworthily, you would drop dead. Or you'd get sick. 
Now a pope can commit atrocities to children, or a priest, or a pastor, and take communion, or hand out communion even, and live to be 90 years old, nothing happens to him. This is not the true church. The true church ended of Jesus in 70 AD, and he gave everything back to the Father. This is not the same. Negative. I'm trying to read some stuff, see what somebody's got to say. Just read the whole New Testament. I'm not against people reading the Bible. I'm not one of these pastor-type people that don't want you to read the Bible. I want you to read it all again. Only this time, forget about the doctrine you've been taught and believe what they said. John the Baptist was standing in Jordan baptizing people. The Pharisees walked up to John, and he said, O generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? He's not talking to us. He was talking to them. The wrath was coming on them in their generation. Whenever Jesus pointed at them, and he said, Some of you standing here will not taste death until you see me coming in my kingdom. He meant it. Some of them would still be alive. Whenever he rose back from the dead, he told Peter that Peter was going to die. Why would he even tell Peter that Peter was going to die if all of them were going to die? Why is that news to Peter? And Peter goes, Peter was offended and said, well, what will John do? And Jesus said, what is it to you if I let John tarry until I come? Follow thou me. Why tell Peter he's going to die if all of them were going to die? Because not all of them were going to die. So just believe what they said. This time, don't think that they're liars, you know? They're not liars. The apostles and Jesus were not liars. Everybody that came after them, they were. After the temp right after the temple was destroyed, they started a Christian church. What do you... I don't know. And then they started saying it as if that never happened. Why isn't that in people's Bibles? All of Israel's history is contained in the Bible, except for the things that Jesus fulfilled except for that temple being destroyed and the siege of Jerusalem and the Jews being killed and slaughtered and 500 a day being crucified until the Romans ran out of wood. Why isn't that part in there? The carrying away into Babylon was a huge deal. That was a third of the prophets. And that only lasted 70 years. This has been 2,000 years and it's not in the Bible? They're trying to keep it from you. They don't want you to know that Jesus Christ already returned, that we should be worshiping God today and not judging one another for the flesh. It's not good to do evil. You should not. If you lie, you're not going to make it to heaven. If you steal, kill, manipulate, hurt women and children, murder, you're not going to go to heaven. There's no way. But he ended sin. Sin was accustomed to the flesh. The flesh was at enmity with God. Jesus Christ came and put an end to that. It doesn't matter what you eat, drink, wear, listen to, watch, put on, that kind of stuff. None of that matters. And the people who think that it does... They're hypocrites. So live the Ten Commandments. What are you talking about? Well, yeah, I mean, you should, but you shouldn't have to read anything written in stone. That was added because of transgression. Said, what was the law added for? It was added because of transgression. Even back then, Second Corinthians chapter 3 said the Ten Commandments were the ministration of death and condemnation and that they were done away and abolished. Most people don't know that that's in the Bible. But that's Second Corinthians chapter 3 for anybody who doesn't believe me. That's what it said about the Ten Commandments. The rapture already happened. It happened after they fled into the wilderness. I have three hour... Somebody brought up somebody else's stuff on YouTube. I have three hour videos explaining the whole Bible on my YouTube channel. I've got... I've been doing this for years. You're telling me to watch somebody else, but... I do this for years, and I actually quote what the Bible says. Uh, the flesh part. Jesus' blood couldn't cover the spirit. If you try to pour blood on a spirit, it just goes right through it. But blood does cover the flesh, and our flesh is made of dirt. Jesus' blood ran down onto the dirt. Like If you pour blood on the dirt, it covers it. Blood on flesh, it covers it. But it didn't cover spirits. And those who didn't believe that Jesus ended sin didn't make it to heaven. And those who still act like sin exists today are the ones who are doing evil, condemning everybody else. And they're not going to make it to heaven. Sin are the things that are accustomed to the flesh. My YouTube channel is my name. It's on my. Uh, it's also on my profile under my picture. It says YouTube. 
You debated any knowledgeable person? Yes, yes, many times. Four years. But they won't debate me, they just block me. That's what happens. Read Vedas. Why are you working for Satan? I'm not. Satan was destroyed whenever the temple was destroyed. That's Isaiah chapter 27. Whenever the altar was made chalk stones and Jerusalem was destroyed. Isaiah chapter 27. That's whenever Satan was destroyed. What did Jesus say while he was on earth? He said, now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And the prince of this world is coming and he has nothing in me. What happened whenever Satan was cast out? He knew that he had but a short time. And Jesus said that happened back then. He said, be end of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. Satan was judged back then, not today. Uh, Revelation chapter 12 said, A woman clothed with the sun, with upon her crown were twelve stars, and she travailed in birth. Those twelve stars are the tribes of Israel. Israel birthed Jesus Christ. She travailed in birth and brought forth a man-child that was to rule the nations with the rod of iron. She gave birth to Jesus. Satan tried to devour the child as soon as it was born. That's Herod trying to kill all the babies around Bethlehem, under two years old, trying to kill Jesus. But the child was caught up to the throne and to God. When he was caught up to the throne, there was war in heaven. Michael and the angels fought against the dragon and the dragon against the angels. And the dragon's tail drew a third part of the stars and did cast them to the earth. And Satan was cast to the earth, that old dragon, the serpent that is called the devil. And he came down having great wrath because he knew that he had but a short time. And he chased the remnant of the believers into the wilderness for 1,260 days. That happened in 66 AD. He chased them into the wilderness. But Jesus said, now was the judgment of the world. Now was Satan cast out. When he was cast out, he knew that he had but a short time. When was Satan cast out? After Jesus ascended up to heaven. <clears throat> he was released for a short time. The only reason that he was released was to gather the armies together. That was it. That's all it ever said. He, the beast, and the false prophet at the end gathered all the armies together for Armageddon. That's why he was released for Gog and Magog. Well, when Satan is released again, or did that happen? Yeah, Satan was already released. Bait me, if God is for me, who can stand against me? I dare you. Read that scripture. Uh, if God is for me, who can be against me? I just read it. I quoted it. I'm not in the Bible. Am I Gnostic? No, I'm not Gnostic. I don't have any frilly little weird beliefs that I need attention for and I want people to watch my videos for. I'm not claiming some secret esoteric knowledge where I can say a bunch of words that other people don't understand and make them feel beneath me whenever all they really need to do is be good and love God. And God is the one with knowledge. Jesus had the most knowledge in the world and he never brought anything up for a reason. He never was like, oh, you know what Nephilim is? You know the shape of the earth? You know this? You know that? No, he didn't say anything like that. A bunch of people thinking. Armageddon meant Hill of Megiddo. If you Google that, it means Hill of Megiddo. Whenever Israel was delivered from Egypt, 1400 BC, they were afraid of the Canaanites. So it was a huge battle for them. You know, they were afraid of the Canaanites. They wouldn't go. They disobeyed God. So they couldn't defeat them for a while. Their walls were real high. And then the Egyptians went up there and went to war with them in Megiddo. Megiddo is a place right above Israel. Israel has actually occupied that land a few times in their history. And the Egyptians went up and did a five-month siege. And sieged, they besieged them. They built bulwarks around them and wouldn't let them out of the city and starved them. And then they killed them. And that's exactly what it was talking about would happen in the Bible, the siege of Jerusalem. The Romans came like Jesus said. Jesus said since they didn't know the time of their visitation that the armies would come, compass them around, cast a trench about them. Since they didn't know the time of their visitation. And he walked up to that city and wept. Not this future city that we have now. But he walked up to that city. And the armies would come, compass them around, cast a trench about them, keep them in on every side, and lay them even with the ground and their children within them. Behold, their house was left unto them desolate. And that's exactly what happened in history. Just like the siege of Megiddo, which was huge for Egypt, I mean for Israel back then. Because whenever they destroyed the Canaanites in Megiddo, they made a law to where they couldn't build any more walls. So it was easier for Israel to take over all the land they were supposed to have and defeat the Canaanites after that. But anyway, 
Armageddon is just talking about the siege of Jerusalem. And during that siege, the Romans built a wall around them. They said that the bodies were so high inside of that wall, they killed over one million Jews just on the day the temple was destroyed. Just the day, and this is a three and a half year war, just the day the temple was destroyed, they killed over one million Jews that were trapped inside of that wall. And blood was so high, up to the horse's bridle, like Revelation said, that it came out of the wall that the Romans built and quenched fires that were burning in Israel. What does that sound like? Blood coming out of her like a wine press. That's exactly what it looked like. They couldn't even touch the ground. There were so many bodies. That's what happened in history. Who was the false prophet? Who was the Antichrist? There is no Antichrist in the Bible. You're looking for uh, people like John of Giscala and Simon Barjora. I'd probably have to type that in. Uh, Simon Giscala, Simon, Simon Barjora and John of Giscala. Alright, I went too far. There was no single Antichrist in the Bible, only the spirit of Antichrist. John said, little children, it is the last hour. He said this 2,000 years ago. He said, you've heard that Antichrist shall come. It wasn't capitalized. It didn't say that the Antichrist shall come. He was saying, you've heard Antichrist will come, like the spirit of Antichrist. He said, even now are there many Antichrists, hereby know we that it is the last hour. They knew that they were living in the last hour. And then in next John, he said, the spirit of Antichrist. Now, the man of sin came and sat in the temple and took over the temple. And that happened in history. For that, you would have to look up. I hate stopping and typing, and I can't find that comment, so I'm just going to comment to whoever this is and put the names in here. Reply to, sure. I'll type in their names, though. You'd have to look up these men. John of Scala and Simon Bar Jura. And that'll tell you who the man of sin are. What this man is speaking is inherently Antichrist. No, it's not. You don't know what your Bible says. I believe that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. I am not Antichrist. Whenever John said, he said, if they say that Jesus Christ has not come in the flesh, this is that spirit of Antichrist. I believe that Jesus came in the flesh. The man of lawlessness was because he didn't care for anyone. He fought the Romans, he fought the Jews, he fought Christ, he fought the Christians. He literally fought everybody. That's what it meant by the man of lawlessness. But you guys are taking that word lawlessness as if he didn't keep the law of God or something. What does Revelation 1.1 1, 1 say? I don't exactly know, but I'm pretty sure it tells John to write the things which must shortly come to pass. And blessed are those that read those things. Or maybe that's like Revelation 1, 2, 1, 3, I don't know. And blessed were those that read those things, for the time was at hand. When did the first resurrection of the righteous occur? In 66 AD. Teach your children to always be honest. Teach them not to judge for the flesh, but always be honest. Teach them not to lie, steal, hurt anybody. We don't have to do those things. If you know that you're going to heaven as soon as you die, there's no point in all that. That's what you should teach them, and teach them to believe in God. Actual, actually have faith in God. You know, if God doesn't tell you it, you don't know it, so wait on God. Don't run to a Bible, don't run to Google, wait on God. See if he talks to you in dreams, things that you could never imagine or hear before. Actually give him the time of day. Yeah, it was things to come, see sick pirate, and it came. It was things that were shortly coming to pass. Not 2,000 years. Daniel saw the same things as John. Daniel lived 500 years before Christ, roughly. Daniel was told, seal up the words of the book of this prophecy, for it won't be for many days, but it was for the time of the end. John was told, seal not the words of the book of this prophecy, for the time is at hand. So what does that mean? That means John was in the time of the end. Daniel was not. If those things in Revelation haven't happened yet, then God should have said, seal these things up for many, 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 many days. Four times the amount of Daniel. Yeah, they waited in their grave. <clears throat> That's what Sheol was. That's what Jesus actually came to do away with. Everybody waited in the grave until the time of John the Baptist or Jesus Christ dying. 
John the Baptist said, Now is the axe laid under the root of the tree. There was no hellfire in the Old Testament. Everybody waited in darkness, slept. But whenever John came, he said, Now is the axe laid to the root of the tree. Now any tree that doesn't bear good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. And that was a place called Gehenna, outside of Jerusalem. Jesus went down and preached to the souls in prison whenever he died. Those that believed him went into Jerusalem and waited under the altar. They were seen going into the holy city. The dead in Christ were waiting under the altar in Abraham's bosom under the glory cloud of God. The ones who didn't believe him were trapped in a place where they burned dead bodies and trash outside of Jerusalem called Gehenna. That's where their souls were trapped and they were tormented in that flame. Revelation also talked about things that are still disclosed. Everything in Revelation already happened, man. Jesus Christ brought it back at the end of it. And said he sent his angel to the churches to testify unto them the things which must shortly come to pass. Or shortly be done. Those out of the old world are already saved, yes. Everybody from Adam until Christ's return heard the gospel. And they went up to heaven if they believed in Jesus. No, I have not seen Jesus here a thousand years. That thousand years doesn't actually mean one thousand. If you read where God called Abraham, this is hard to explain to people that don't understand, but the Hebrew language was letters and numbers, so the translators could have translated the whole Bible into nothing but numbers. They could have done that. Or they could have translated the whole Bible into nothing but letters. So a lot of the times, whenever they put numbers in there, it should have been a word. You know, like a thousand is like saying, if I've told you a thousand times, you know, it's a Hebrew idiom. It's like God has cattle on a thousand hills. You know, why not 999 hills? It just means he has cattle on, you know, all hills or many. Or, and then whenever God called Abraham, he said, let this be a covenant with you for a thousand generations. A thousand generations would be 40,000 years, 70,000 years, 100,000 years, depending on what you think a generation was. But if you read Matthew chapter 1, it was only 42 generations until, from Abraham until Christ. It said, from Abraham until David were 14 generations, David until the carrying away into Babylon was 14 generations, and from the carrying away to Babylon until Christ were 14 generations. It's 42 generations, not a thousand. It's just a Hebrew idiom. What Jesus actually said was, some of them standing there would not taste death until he returned in his kingdom to reward every man according to their works. He didn't reward every man according to their works until after the thousand year reign. It's just a bad, bad translation of a word. He actually did a short work on the earth and delivered everything back to the Father. He told you what his reign was. He said whenever he came back in the glory of his Father with all of his holy angels, then... Uh, they would be given 12 thrones to judge the 12 tribes of Israel. And that's what it was about. That's why in Revelation he told them if they overcame and loved not their lives unto the death, that they would sit down on the throne with them and be given thrones to judge and break the nations of Israel into shivers, which is talking about prophets or prophecies from the Old Testament about the potter's vessel and breaking them into shivers. I went to God for my understanding. You can call me a know-it-all if you want. But I didn't understand this stuff by reading. I actually threw everything away and cussed God out many times throughout life and said, look, those churches are ridiculous, everything they believe, I can't find truth in them, everybody disagrees. Finally, I got mad enough to throw everything away and say, I'm just going to call you truth and truth. If you can't tell me the truth, nobody can. If you want me, come get me the balls in your court because I can't do it and I can't find you. And I had a bunch of dreams of things that I couldn't even believe, like Christianity ending and all this stuff already happening, so... You don't believe Christianity ended, but you believe all scripture is fulfilled. How do you get that? To be a Christian, you had to take communion. But to take communion was only to show the Lord's death until he came. And then he would raise you up at the last day. There was a last day, and all in Christ were raised up at the last day. It said it six times in John. You would have had to have been baptized. You would have to have apostles. You would have to have Jewish people preaching to you. The Gentiles were not the preachers. The Jews were... The salvation was of the Jews. They went out and preached to the Gentiles and sealed up the Gentiles. You don't have any of that stuff anymore. It's not for you. You don't need Christ anymore because Christ had the gospel of reconciliation. You did not need Jesus Christ before Adam and Eve fell. And you don't need Jesus Christ 
after the last man Adam finished his work because we're reconciled and we have God again because sin is no longer weighed in the balance because the law is fulfilled because the accuser of the brethren is no longer up there accusing us day and night the rapture already happened but it wasn't a witnessed event it never talks in the Bible about what they try to tell people in this Hollywood mindset that millions of people would disappear from all over the place it's not what it said they had a place prepared the believers were told in Matthew 25 there was five foolish virgins and five wise virgins the wise virgins went out into the, out into the country to meet the bridegroom and the foolish virgins had to go back into the city whenever that happened the end came and those that were left in the city didn't believe Jesus they didn't listen to his words he told them to flee Judea they had a place prepared out in the wilderness and that's where the believers went so it wasn't a witnessed event the rapture happened 1260 days after the believers fled into the wilderness when the believers fled into the wilderness the two witnesses came and preached for 1260 days whenever Satan was let back up out of his bottomless pit he overcame the two witnesses and then they stood up on their feet and were caught up into heaven that's whenever the rapture happened the same 1260 days again the Hebrew language they could have said 42 months there but they didn't because it meant something different the 1260 days is important because it's the same time as you've got the two witnesses until they were caught up into heaven you've got the believers fleeing into the wilderness until they were caught up into heaven that's the same time even though it still equals 42 months the 42 months was a completely different thing even though it's translated as a word the word the number is different I mean because it was dealing with the armies coming to Jerusalem and trampling the city underfoot and the Jews falling by the edge of the sword and being led away captive for 42 months I am giving scripture make them true believers you got a weird Bible I'm reading the King James Version if that's okay the two witnesses I don't know who they were exactly I have a theory about it but we don't live back then and they weren't witnessed their enemies beheld them and then their enemies were destroyed and it wasn't the whole world beholding them like people teach today that's not what it said they preached in the holy city it said which was spiritually called Sodom and Egypt and then their enemies beheld them beheld them and then their enemies were destroyed so we don't actually know but my theory is that they were the spirits of John and Daniel because John was told he must prophesy again before many nations kindreds tongues and kings and Daniel was told to go his way and rest and he would stand in his lot at the end of days and they're the ones that were told about that war so that's my theory but I don't know for sure what are the two marks one had the Holy Spirit, the other had the law. You said, what are the two marks? One for the righteous under Christ and the wicked. Those who had the Holy Spirit were of Christ, and those who had the law written in ink and stone were not of Christ. Those that went back to the law. If you read Exodus and Deuteronomy, the law was given as a curse. And when it was given, it said, bind this upon your hand and let it be for frontlets between your eyes. It said, let this be for a sign upon your hand and a memorial between your eyes, so that the law of the Lord may be in your mouth. Jesus Christ came to give them the New Testament. So you've got Moses, who delivers them from Egypt. And then he gives them the Old Testament. That is done in blood, but it's the blood of animals, the sprinkling of animals. And he gave them the Passover 50 days after. I mean, he gave them the law 50 days after the Passover. And delivering them from Egypt. That, that was laws written in ink. And then you've got Jesus that was like unto Moses, of one of their brethren that... If they did not hear that prophet, they would be cut off from the people. He gave them the New Testament. He became the new Passover. And 50 days after Passover, on the day of Pentecost, he put the laws of God inside of them, not written in ink or in stone, but in their hearts by the Spirit. So that was the New Testament. And he did that by the Holy Spirit. Instead of the Holy Law, it was the Holy Spirit. Those who went back and kept the curse of the law that Jesus Christ redeemed them from, they had the mark of the beast. That's why the Jews wore Teflon, or phylacteries, on their hand and their foreheads. It's a little box with a little scroll in it. John, in Revelation chapter 10, was told to eat that little scroll. He, he saw an angel put one foot on the sea and one foot on the earth. One beast came up out of the sea, the other beast came up out of the earth. He had a little scroll in his hand, small enough to eat. 
This is the little scroll that the Jews wore on their right hand and on their forehead, called phylacteries back then, called Teflon today. And they write little Torah scriptures on them. And they go back to the law and reject Jesus Christ, who put the laws of God inside of them. And he ate that little book, and it was bitter in his belly. How is that blasphemy? You guys are the ones blaspheming. Jesus Christ came to fulfill the curse and end the curse of the law. He was the New Testament. And you're telling me that I'm blaspheming because you're keeping the Old Testament like the unbelieving Jews did that got destroyed in that generation? No. He was a New Testament. Jesus literally saying, drink my blood, and this is my body which is broken for you. And this is the blood of the New Testament. He was saying, you will no longer, God will no longer pass over you because you have the Old Testament. He was saying, but now you must believe in me. Right? The Old Testament wasn't going to save them anymore. Oh, absolute boss me, you have no clue what you're talking about if you read Revelation, so what's the word and the scroll in the box? They can write whatever they want. Uh, the word and the scroll in the box, they can write whatever laws are dear to them. Uh, I love how atheists love read the Bible. I'm not an atheist at all. I believe in Jesus. I believe the Bible. I believe in God. Society need... Oh, where, how did it have to do with buying and selling? See, the Christians refuse to wear the phylacteries. They refuse to wear these little scrolls. So, whenever the zealots, the people who rejected Jesus and fought Rome and everything, because they were zealous of the law, literally, you know, whenever the zealots took over the temple, they wouldn't allow Christians to buy and sell. It was against the law for Jews back then to spend any currency that wasn't Jewish. They could make any money they wanted, but they had to go up into the temple to the money changers that Jesus threw over in the temple and exchange their currency for Jewish currency. And since they wouldn't wear the phylacteries or the teflon, the unbelievers knew that they were Christian, and they would not allow them to buy and sell. They also killed any Christian they could get their hands on that wouldn't convert and join them. So that all happened in history. It was a Jewish thing. That's why those that overcame the mark of the beast sang the song of Moses. It wasn't a Gentile thing. Gentiles having not the law do by nature the things contained in the law. Gentiles were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of promise without Christ having no hope and without God in the world. They weren't made nigh until the blood of Christ because Jesus Christ was uh, crucified for them, breaking down the middle wall of partition, making in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, taking away the handwritten ordinances that were against them and that were contrary to them, nailing him to his cross, so that the Gentiles could come into the fold also, those who didn't have the law. <clears throat> yeah, well, I'll post this to my YouTube after I'm done too, so anybody can go back and listen if I'm talking too fast or anybody would like to hear it again. I know I get to where I'm talking too fast because uh, I like to get as much information as I can before I miss my train of thought. Christianity, ancient paganism, wrapped up in respect of Jesus. Is Jesus God in human form? Uh, I'm hearing you clearly. Nobody going back to listen to this blasphemy. That's fine. There is no gap. You don't just... Boss Hog, there's no gap between the 69th week and the 70th week. If you go read Daniel, the statue that Daniel saw, the head of gold was Babylon, he said it as plain as day. The next ones that came were the Medes and the Persians, they came in Daniel's lifetime. That happened whenever Belshazzar desecrated the things of the temples. And then the Medes and the Persians came and took away Babylon's place and took them over. That happened in history. The next people that came, he said, the king of Greece, or the great king, the notable horn between his eyes, the great king, that's Alexander the Great, literally called the great king. The king of Greece would come. So then Greece came and took over the Medes and the Persians. But whenever the notable horn was broken, Greece was divided into four parts. This is what happened in history. Alexander the Great died. Greece was divided into four parts. Then Rome came and took over. Whenever Rome took over in 63 BC, they allowed Israel back into their land. So this is them mixing with the clay and the iron. They allowed Israel back into their land. General Pompey ousted everybody that wasn't Jewish and gave them their actual rights to their actual land. And they became a nation again. Fulfilling that prophecy in time for Christ, 
And then the wall was built again, and the street was made straight in perilous times, so that Jesus Christ could be born. It was in league. For, it was in done for the Messiah, and that was Herod rebuilding the temple. So that happened in their lifetime, and they mixed themselves and gave them their nation back. And then one came, a rock cut out of the mountain without hands. That was Jesus. One like the Son of Man came to the Ancient of Days. He fulfilled everything and delivered the kingdoms back to the Ancient of Days, back to God. You can't skip 2,000 years after all that went in order the way that it did. There is no thousand years of peace in the Bible. It never says peace. That is a complete... Uh, it's, I don't know. There's so many people say that and it's not in the Bible. It never says a thousand years of peace. Actually, nobody was saved during the thousand year reign. It was about the first resurrection until the seventh trumpet. That's all it was. No, tell me where it says peace. If you say, I just can't read, tell me where it's peace. Because it wasn't. It was destruction. They were destroying their enemies. They had peace in heaven, yeah. But there wasn't peace on earth, not down here. God is not stupid. I'm making my own understanding. I'm basically quoting the Bible from front to back, and you're calling it my own understanding. And that's all you have to run with. It's crazy. Wrong, 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 false. So, so yeah, okay, whatever. Say something. The End Game, buy my book. No, I usually don't. I just made this one for today. I usually don't even promote my book. But, yeah, you should buy my book. I didn't write a book because I didn't want anybody to read them. And I've written, like, six, so... <clears throat> but yeah, nobody writes a book and says, please don't. No, you didn't put that comment to say, don't read my comment, you know. Uh, do I think people are... <laughs> yeah. Um, only God is smart. Honest people are smart. Evil people and liars are not. If you lie about those lustful programs, you're not going to be smart. The only way to get the right answer to a question is to tell the truth about it. So honest people are smart, liars are not. The more you lie, the worse you are. Uh, we would be without sin. Yeah, sin already ended. I said that earlier in this live, which I will post to YouTube probably tomorrow. I don't want it to interfere with the other videos I posted today with the algorithm and whatnot. This is Son of Man for Light. That did already happen, though. Uh, Paydan Music. I don't know how to say your name, sorry. Um, they've been in New Jerusalem. Whenever Old Jerusalem was destroyed, they went up into New Jerusalem. They have an everlasting city in heaven. That city was 12,000 cubits on each side, 144,000 cubits. Each cubit was the size of the man, or of the angel is what it said. Or of the angel, because they were in heaven. He, Jesus told them that whenever they died, I've been talking so much, I'm starting to fumble over my words, sorry. Jesus told them that whenever they died, they would be as the angels of heaven. Great was their reward in heaven. They had a home eternal in the heavens, is what Paul said. They had on earth no continuing city. They looked for a better hope and heavenly. Jesus went up to heaven to prepare a place for them, that so where he was, they could be with him also. Psalms 89, David's throne was forever in heaven. They actually went up to heaven. They've been in New Jerusalem the whole time. That's why the dead in Christ are waiting under the altar for Jesus to come and destroy that temple because that was the gate to heaven. <clears throat> That's where Jacob laid his head and said, this is the house of the Lord, this is the gate to heaven. And the angels ascended up and down the ladder. That's why God fought over that land. That's why the Jews fought over that land is because it was the center of the known earth and it was the portal to heaven where God dwelt with the earth. And Jacob told them, or he told God, he said, if God would be with them as he was with Abraham and Isaac, then that would be his house. And David sought out the place where Jacob laid his head so that he could build him a house. But God told David he couldn't build him a house because of all the war he had to actually fight. But there would be a time of peace whenever Solomon would come and he would build him the house. And he built that house where Jacob laid his head. <clears throat> And that was the gate to heaven. So the dead in Christ were waiting under the altar. And the apostles were going out and sealing up and saving 12,000 from each tribe. There was one apostle for each tribe. And they went out and 3,000 were added to the church the first day on Pentecost. And 5,000 were added another day. 
And they told Paul whenever he went to shave his head in the temple and do an oath, they said, How many, you see how many thousands of Jews there are, brethren, that believe, and they are zealous of the law. And half of cities believed, and whole cities believed. And the Lord God added daily as many as would be added. There were many thousands of Jews that believed back then. You can count an easy 80,000 in the book of Acts. It literally numbers them. And if you wanted to get into those city populations that they spoke of, it would be more than that. But they did that. And once they became the temple, once the 144,000 were done being killed, then Jesus Christ could return. Because once they were the temple in the new city, then the city on earth could be destroyed. Because they were going to become that heavenly city. And they've been that heavenly city the whole time. And on each side is one name of an apostle, and 12,000 cubits on each side. And that's the 144,000. They can't be saved today. They were saved back then, whenever Israel actually believed in Jesus. If you want to go to heaven, be an honest person. I know that this sounds too simple, but it's true. God is the door. Believe in God. Wait on Him. You know, make sure that you believe in God, wait on God, and always be honest. Jesus ended sin, so don't condemn yourself. Don't be a hypocrite, acting like you didn't watch that lustful program, acting like you didn't look at that girl, or you didn't like your boyfriend's best friend. Don't act like that, because then you'll just be a hypocrite. And all the people that blame you for that kind of stuff, they do it themselves. And they're just liars, so they can't understand the truth. So if you want to go to heaven, always be honest. And believe in God. God is the door today. The holy city isn't going to come down, Tina Bender. It's not coming down to earth. That's just a problem with us living in the 21st century and not understanding marriages back then. Whenever it says, the holy, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, adorned like a bride for her husband. That was John seeing a vision. And it was just saying that her, his wife was prepared. Back in the day, whenever they would get married, the woman would walk down the stairs and the groom would wait at the bottom of the steps. And he was seeing that it was fulfilled, that new Jerusalem was ready, that all the people were in her, and she was done. It never said that it would come back to earth. Jesus literally said, if anybody said Jesus was on earth, don't believe them, because they're false Christs, because he wasn't coming back to earth. He came in the clouds to get them, and they were caught up in the air to meet him, and so they would ever be with the Lord in a heavenly Jerusalem, a mount that could not be touched. Jesus will return the same way he ascended. He did. That's written in history. I just don't like getting into history. Don't like getting into history because people say, well, that's not in the Bible. That's just history. But history proves that Jesus already returned by eyewitnesses in the first century. You can read it in Josephus, Wars of the Jews. On the 21st day of Artemisius, that's, that was the Greek month, Lyar was the Jewish month. On the 21st day of Artemisius, at sunsetting, they were seeing a magnificent sight, that if you weren't there to see it, you wouldn't believe it. It was like the thing of fables. There were armies and chariots running on the clouds in shining armor. And he did come back, <clears throat> just like he told them in Acts chapter 1, like you quoted, Mr. Supercool. He was talking to them, though, not to us. Whenever he ascended up, sorry... <clears throat> Into heaven, the two men in white apparel stood next to them and said, You men of Galilee, why stand you here gazing? The same Jesus that was taken up from you shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go. It was the men of Galilee. And then what did he tell them? You are not preaching the gospel today. They preached the gospel back then. It was their commission. That same chapter said whenever he called the twelve together, whenever he called the apostles together, after he had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, he told them to tarry at Jerusalem until they were endued from pow with power from on high. And once the Holy Spirit came upon them, they would be his witnesses in all of Judea, Samaria, Jerusalem, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. They were, not us. Just like Mark 16, he called the eleven together and said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned, and these signs shall follow them that believe... They shall speak in new tongues, take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. They preached the gospel to every creature. They did that back then. That's why Paul said in Colossians 1, he said, The gospel which you have heard, which has been preached to every creature which is under heaven. 
Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles. Nobody else is preaching to the Gentiles. He told Timothy, because he was going to be in prison in Rome, just like he told Rome, I thank my God your faith is heard throughout the entire world. He said he had finished his course, and by his mouth he had made known... Sorry, they're making a lot of noise. He had made known uh, the mystery to all the Gentiles. So he did that back then. Oh. This man knows nothing about the Bible. No, that's, that's a weird thing to say after how much I've been talking and how long you've been in here. Keep studying, because I have much to learn. Yeah, right. Okay, thanks, Tina. Don't be deceived. This speaker almost looks like that Trump prophet preacher singer. What the heck are you talking about, Trump prophet preacher singer? <laughs> Nothing except guest. I dare you. No, I'm good. Am I Christian? No. Christianity ended in 70 AD. And Jesus used to be the door to heaven. He is not the door today. Don't act like a know-it-all. I'm just going to tell you if I know things. Why not? Aren't you wanting to tell me what you know? You can say whatever you want. It doesn't mean you know anything. Okay, that's fine. Protestant, wacko. Yeah, yeah, the Catholics are great, though. How do you interpret John 3.16? Funny story, John 3.16 isn't actually the words of Jesus. It's the words of John. Jesus didn't repeat himself. John 3.15 and John 3.16 say the same thing. So, the John 3.16 shouldn't be in red. It's the words of John. Jesus had just said the exact same thing the uh, place before that, and then John was explaining that. He was explaining it. He said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. It's true. That was true back then. But you have to believe the rest of the Bible that says that Jesus Christ did a short work on the earth. you got to believe that. That he appeared once in the end of the world. That yet a little while, and he who tarried would not tarry, but would come. That the night was far spent, the day was at hand. That they were gathering themselves together the more so, as they saw the day approaching. That they were making their moderation known unto all men. That the Lord was at hand. That they were looking and hasting to the day of God. That there were many antichrists, because they were living in the last hour. That the coming of the Lord drew nigh. That the mystery of iniquity did already work. You've got to believe all the rest of that, man. And that he was coming quickly, and his reward was with them, and those things would shortly be done. That generation wouldn't pass until all things were fulfilled. 1 Corinthians 15, 24-28 said, God delivered all things to Christ, and Christ reigned until all things were put under his feet. At the resurrection, he delivered the kingdom back up to the Father, and became subject to the Father, who did put all things under him, so that God could be all in all. The marriage supper came and the door was shut. Read Revelation 19. Once the marriage supper came, the Lord God omnipotent began to reign. Just like it said in Corinthians. Jesus finished his work. The marriage supper came. Door was shut. Lord God omnipotent began to reign. Or omnipotent, however you want to say it. Why does my Bible say no one knows the hour? It, do, it does say that. But it doesn't say that new one, no one knew the seasons. He actually said, you are not in darkness, brethren, that that day should overtake you as a thief. He said, you know. He said, I have no need to write unto you. As for the times and seasons, brethren, I have no need to write unto you. For ye yourselves know that the day of the Lord shall so, shall so come as a thief in the night. He said, but you are not in darkness, brethren, that that day should overtake you as a thief. And he told them to be sober and watch. And he said, may God preserve your bodies, souls, and spirits until the coming of the Lord, because they would still be alive. <clears throat> and that all happened there. No, you're not in hell, you're on earth. All the bishops admit Bible contaminated. There's definitely some issues with Bible translation. Please, you deceived. So how are we saved now? Go straight to the Father. Don't judge people for the flesh. Uh, I can't exactly prove it, dude. Just go read it. I wasn't saying, dude, your name is dude. But go read it. Jesus didn't repeat himself two verses in a row. That was John explaining what Jesus had said. Jesus is king is false, no scriptures of private well I was actually quoting it right <laughs> on accident while I was reading your comment yeah it said the scripture is not a private interpretation, which is true and I did, I just read it and you got mad and said read that I read it to somebody that is in 45,000 different denominations 
in one of 45,000 different denominations that claims to have the Holy Spirit but believes it tells them something different than it tells everybody else. That most likely makes rapture predictions and antichrist uh, predictions that don't come to pass, and then you still think that you have God. It's crazy. Jesus went to hell for three days. Yeah, he did. You should have believed in him. I am not against Jesus. But you should also be against the Christians. Why don't they believe everything that Jesus said? Why don't they believe that that temple was destroyed and the believers already fled and they were never heard from again? And the armies came and trampled the city and all the blood of all the prophets was required at the hands of that generation and behold their house was left unto them desolate. And like he said to the priest of the Sanhedrin, after this you will see me coming in the clouds of heaven. Because they would still be there. That's why Peter said he knew how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment. Those that pierced him would see him and wail because of him. Because they'd still be alive whenever he returned. <clears throat> Anyone who has a real relationship with the Holy Spirit knows the truth, period. Huh, Brian? You think that? That'd be so weird to live in your world, man. Because somebody who disagrees with you would say your exact comment to yourself. It's a fantasy, man. The man of lawlessness, look up John of Giscala and Simon Barjora. You're as deluded as they come, but you'll pray for my demonic spirit. Yeah, thousands of people said that to me. Delusional, my guy, find Jesus and you will be saved. What Jesus do you want me to find? Are you a Freemason? No, I am not. I don't join clubs, and to be a Freemason you have to be Christian, Muslim, or Jewish, and I am none of the above. Live every day as if Jesus will return. That's what they were doing back then, not today. I think it did happen last night. I don't know what you're talking about. The third temple hasn't ever been built. There is no third temple in scripture, ever. Daniel and Ezekiel both lived at the time whenever Solomon's temple was destroyed, and they were prophesying about the next temple being built. There is no third temple in scripture. Jesus came after that temple was built, and he pointed at it and said, not one stone in that temple would stand upon another. Who is the man of lawlessness? I already answered that. Sorry, I'm scrolling down. I'm a little behind on the comments because I like to try to answer stuff. Can you please explain why you blaspheme the Holy Spirit and don't care? I blasphemed your Holy Spirit. I never blasphemed the real one. The real Holy Spirit was amazing. It led them and guided them into all truth, not 45,000 denominations, not presidents swearing on the Bible, not war, genocide, and tyranny, not 2.5 billion liars. And the real Holy Spirit was amazing. You could walk behind somebody with it and you would get healed. Now you can have preachers, because I've been in the churches, where preachers can come out and lay hands on people and heal them. And people speak in tongues and fall under the power of this preacher. But then they find out the preacher's been hurting little children. If you had the real Holy Spirit, that guy would have dropped dead. What year was the book of Revelation written? It was actually written around 65 AD. People have heard today that it's written in the 90s, but that's not true. That is a made-up doctrine by a man named Irenaeus. Irenaeus lived, he wrote a book against heresies in 180 AD, 110 years after the temple was destroyed. And in that book he said Jesus Christ was 50 years old whenever he's crucified. <clears throat> that's where he got his 20 year later date from. Jesus wasn't 50 whenever he's crucified, he was 30. So instead of saying it was written before 70, he said it was written in the 90s. It's not true. The book of Revelation actually said that the temple was still standing whenever it was written. It said, John, arise, measure the temple, the altar, and them that worship therein. It said that the beast blasphemed his name and his tabernacle because the temple was still standing. It said the dead in Christ were waiting under the altar. The book of Revelation was written while the temple was still standing, and you can go back to older history by Pipius. Who said that John was exiled to Patmos under Nero, and he got off of Patmos and was killed at the hand of the Jews, killed by the hands of the Jews in the mid-60s? Wait, can you explain what you think the real Holy Spirit is again? Uh, nobody has the real Holy Spirit today. Nobody. It doesn't matter who they think they are. I've talked to millions of, over the last decade or so, Christians. It's not the same thing. The real Holy Spirit ended back then. 
But everybody's afraid to blaspheme what the church has told them they received because of a verse in the Bible that said if any man blasphemed the Holy Spirit, they would have never forgiveness, neither in that age or in the age to come. But all that meant was they wouldn't have forgiveness in their lifetime and they wouldn't have eternal life in the age to come. Like Jesus told them if they followed him, in the ages to come, he would have, they would have eternal life. They've had eternal life this whole time. We live in the ages to come. And the Holy Spirit was amazing. It wasn't actually 33. It was 30 AD. But that's something harder to get into, I guess. Jesus died in 30 AD, not 33. And the reason people say that he died in 33, I guess I'll just explain it since I said it is because they count how many times it says Passover in the book of John. But John only talks about one winter, and there's a bad translation in John that says the Passover, the Feast of the Jews, was near, right? But then, just days later, it said the Feast of Tabernacles, that they were at the Feast of Tabernacles, because that wasn't supposed to say Passover. The Feast of Tabernacles was six, seven months after that, not just days later like it has it in John. So. <coughs> Oh, you think this is a short time of deception. No, that already happened. Whenever Jesus came to separate the believers from the unbelievers, whenever he came back in the clouds, the believers fled into the wilderness, and the unbelievers stayed inside the city. When the believers fled into the wilderness, Satan chased them, and then the land opened up its mouth and swallowed the flood that Satan cast out of his mouth. That was Satan going into the bottomless pit. He couldn't deceive the nations any longer because all the believers were out in the wilderness and the unbelievers were the ones trapped in the city. So he couldn't deceive the nations any longer, so what did he do? He gave his power to the beast. Satan had seven heads and ten horns. He wouldn't have given his power to the beast, but he did that because he went into the bottomless pit. So the real translation doesn't stay, I stood upon the sand of the sea. It says, I saw a dragon stand upon the sand of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. Satan gave the beast Satan's power, Satan's seat, and great authority. And it wasn't until the end that Satan was let back out of his prison. He was the eighth head on the beast. He was of the seven. And he went into perdition. And then whenever he was let back out of his prison, he overcame the two witnesses. They were caught up into heaven, and so were the believers that were out in the wilderness. I'm not misleading people, man. Christians have been misleading people for 2,000 years, though. I'm ending your world. What are you talking about? This man ending our world. Christian nowadays are the reason no religion. Yeah, yeah. Seem to know a lot about Satan, huh? Satan's been in the lake of fire for almost 2,000 years. Uh, ever since the temple was destroyed. Isaiah chapter 27 said, Leviathan, the great serpent, was destroyed, and over the altar was made chalk stones. And Jerusalem was destroyed. So that's specific to whenever the altar was burned. And that happened in 70 AD. But whenever Satan was let out of his prison, he, the beast, and the false prophet gathered all the armies together to Jerusalem. And that was all that he got back out for. He gathered everybody back together to fight at Jerusalem. The rapture happened after they were out in the wilderness. My name suits me, sure. This man is clearly not biblically correct. The end of the world already happened. The end of the age, yeah. The Bible should have said age in most places. You have a new translation after Galileo where they knew that the earth was round, or Galileo said that it was, and um, then the Bible was translated. So they translated the word land to earth, and they translated the word age to world. This is calm. Why are you here? So how does it end? Are we to judge? God will always, no evil person is ever going to make it into heaven. If you're a liar, cheater, stealer, manipulator, hurt women and children, you're not going to make it. It's never going to happen. Jesus ended sin, not evil. The Euphrates River has dried up. It dried up a few times in history, if you want to Google that. But you don't need a river to dry up today, man. We have jets that can fly over rivers. They needed it to dry up so that the way of the kings of the east could be prepared. And they could walk through on dry land and kill people with swords and crucify them and lay siege to Jerusalem. 
Nobody's going to siege a city today. Nobody's going to go back to crucifixion. Nobody's going to go back to sacrificing animals. PETA would never allow that to happen. The world would be in an uproar. None of it's going to happen. That was for them back then. You are here to worship God and hopefully make it into heaven. This man is demonized. Was the seven-headed beast a spirit? No, it was Israel. Israel was the beast. Whenever Jesus was on earth, he said that the Jews would fall. He said, there will be great wrath upon the Jews, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and be led away captive into all nations. In Revelation, it said that the beast was given power to continue 42 months. And he said, hear what the Spirit says. If you kill with the sword, you must be killed with the sword. If you lead into captivity, you shall go into captivity. The beast was unbelieving Israel. Jerusalem sits on seven hills. The beast carried Jerusalem, which was Mystery Babylon. Jesus said a prophet could not die outside of Jerusalem. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets. In her was found all the blood of the prophets and the saints and that were slain upon the earth. And her house was left unto her desolate. And Mystery Babylon was left desolate in one hour. And her precious stones were thrown down. Just like Jesus said with the temple. Do you see this temple adorned with goodly stones? Not one stone in this temple shall stand upon another. So the beast was Israel. Jerusalem was Mystery Babylon. And Rome was the rod of iron. Jesus got power over the nations. God put in their hearts to fulfill his will. And to make her blind and desolate and burn her with fire. And she hated Mystery Babylon. That's what happened. That's why Jesus said whenever the Gentiles came to Jerusalem, there would be great wrath upon the Jews, and they would fall by the edge of the sword and be led away captive. I haven't gotten a drink of anything in a long time. So. Guys, I have tons of videos. I'm, I know everybody's liars. I know you can just scroll through TikTok and nothing makes sense, and everybody's saying something else, but... I do have a lot of videos on YouTube and my TikTok, and I have written books, but you don't need to buy my books. If you don't want to, I got videos explaining all that stuff, you know, on my YouTube. Like, three-hour videos, even. Yeah, such division among the church these days, one thing for sure. Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. He's not. He used to be. Daughters of Zion are here now. No, they're not. Jesus said, O daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are coming whenever you shall cry for the mountains and rocks to fall on you and cover you. That happened under the wrath of the Lamb. Under the sixth seal they cried for the mountains and rocks to fall on them and cover them. Yeah, he, re he preached repentance because the kingdom of heaven was at hand back then. <clears throat> Sorry, some comments are funny. So where did you study all this so we can just read the Bible, man? You don't need anything else. Thanks, Grace Message. Uh, read the Bible and go straight to God. You really can't get any knowledge unless it comes from God. You can't. You gotta go straight to the Father and know, and you gotta get stuff like that. <laughs> what? Confess who you think Jesus is. Jesus Christ was the Son of God that came down from heaven. Like it said in John, he was born of, of a virgin. He did the work that Jesus, that God told him to do. God was in him reconciling the world to himself. He defeated sin in the grave. He called his apostles to seal up and save the twelve tribes of Israel. He ended old Israel. He's been ruling over the house of Jacob and New Jerusalem. In heaven for 1,953 years, he took away the sins of the world. He appeared once in the end of the world to put away sins by the sacrifice of himself. That's who Jesus was, the greatest thing that ever happened on this planet. Oh, you've already got grace. You live in a fulfillment. You're in Revelation chapter 9. It can't be. The dead in Christ were waiting under the altar under the sixth seal. You're in chapter 9 now. That's 2,000 years later, just for a couple trumpets. Jesus has created God the Word. Through the Word was made everything. Word became flesh. That word, word, actually means logos, which means thought or idea. In the beginning, God had an idea. The idea was with God, and the idea was what God wanted, and the, that idea came to fruition in the man Jesus Christ. 
If you go back, you can actually translate those things many different ways. So don't leave everything up to the minds of the translators that gave you the Bible. Let's see, Revelation 12 is about to happen. That rejects the fact that Jesus Christ was even born, Kim. Sorry, that's something that gets under my skin. Revelation 12 is talking about the birth of Jesus Christ. So many things that Christians believe reject Jesus, but that one rejects him ever even being born. Revelation 12 is ta not talking about the stars aligning in our time, or like they say happened in 2017, or like they say is about to happen next month. It's not what it's talking about. It's talking about like a dream that Joseph had. Joseph was a dreamer, and he had 11 brothers. And he had a dream, and they were the twelve tribes of Israel. His dad was Jacob, and he had a dream that the sun and the moon and the stars were worshipping him, making obeisance to him, it says. And his father said, Should I and your mother and your brethren bow down and worship you? The eleven stars were worshipping him, and the sun and the moon. Revelation chapter 12 is a woman clothed with the sun, and upon her crown is twelve stars. That's talking about the twelve tribes of Israel. She's clothed with the sun, and the lesser light, the moon, is under her feet. She travailed in birth and brought forth a man-child, Jesus Christ. She travailed in birth. So that sign of her was Jesus being born. If you think that hasn't happened yet, you got a lot of problems, you know. She travailed in birth and brought forth a man-child that was to rule the nations with a rod of iron. That's what it said in Psalms about Jesus. That's what it says in Revelation about Jesus. So who was the child? Jesus. The dragon tried to devour the child as soon as it was born. Then the child was caught up to heaven, to the throne of God. And then there was war in heaven, Michael and the angels fought against the dragon, the dragon was cast out. His tail drew a third part of the stars, all that stuff. Either way, Revelation 12 is not about to happen. That was talking about the birth of Jesus Christ. Wormwood was talking about cholera back then. There were so many dead bodies that they damned rivers, the water turned to blood even around Jerusalem. So many people got sick of how nasty the waters were during that three and a half year war. It was one of the most horrific things that ever happened in history and nobody talks about it. This world really is trying to keep that hidden. Because then you wouldn't support this false Israel today. You wouldn't have Christian presidents going over to swear at a wailing wall so that the Jews who don't even believe in Jesus today that want a new Messiah to come and wipe out all the Christians. That's what they want. And you guys are calling them the people of God, and they don't even believe in Jesus. It's the most insane thing I've ever seen. This is very plausible, thank you. This is a total lie, no thank you. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16-17. Give me a couple words, I'll know what it says. But I don't know what it says just by you putting something down there. I don't have chapter and verses memorized. Okay, bro, in Christ, I'm sorry I was wrong. He's a false teacher. Folks, please leave this page. It's about his people being born and persecuted by the devil. Why are we here? I do have a lot of videos on that if I can't answer all your questions. I'm sorry, I'm not even saying give me a follow, but you can at least go check out some videos if you're interested. Uh, so that is left to be fulfilled from prophecies. I didn't see the first part of your comment there. I'm sorry. Hey, what's up, ardent soldier? 1 Corinthians 15, 52, Jesus Christ delivers everything back to the Father. That's what he did in Corinthians 24 through 28. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Or something like that. Everything has already happened. We are in hell. We are not in hell. You are on the earth. There is nothing left to be fulfilled from the prophecies, Rob, Reyes. All the tribes of the earth will see him. That is talking about the tribes of Jerusalem. That is talking about the twelve tribes of Israel. And you can read that in Zechariah chapter 12. Zechariah chapter 12 is actually talking about Megiddo, where the last good king in Israel was killed. But I'm not trying to show off a bunch of knowledge here by quoting all that either. But it talks about them that pierced him. And they mourned like as if they mourned for their only child. And all the tribes apart mourned the house of David and their families and their wives apart, the house of Levi and their families and their wives apart. That's why he said flee Judea, because the wrath was coming on Judea and the twelve tribes would see him. And then the book of Revelation was written to the Jews. It said, you have tried them which say they are Jews and are not, and have found them liars. So they knew what it was talking about. They had the law and the prophets. Oh, I'll never know if I don't read it. Why do you think that the Vatican is hiding scriptures? They can't control the world. 
How are they going to control the world? They're not the only ones hiding it. Your presidents, your churches, they're hiding the siege of Jerusalem. Uh, this fake Israel today. The son of perdition. The, the son of perdition, if you're talking about the man of sin, that already happened in history. He was in the temple. Oh, no problem, Ron. So do you believe that Jesus returned the second time? Jesus returned in 66 AD. The sixth seal happened in 66 AD. And the seventh trumpet happened in 70 AD. If everything happened already, why is the Bible unfolding before our eyes? I literally just made a video on my page that says, Is Revelation unfolding before our eyes? That's the last video I made. Uh, I made a video about the Mark of the Beast, too. The mark of the Beast was the Law, the Prophets, the Teflon, the Phylacteries. Jesus Christ came to redeem the, them from the curse of the Law, and fulfill the curse of the Law. You're grafted in? You're not grafted in. Paul was the Apostle of the Gentiles. Nobody you've ever heard preach is an Apostle. Nobody was sent to you. Paul was the Apostle of the Gentiles. He magnified his office. He told Timothy that by his mouth all of the Gentiles had heard the Gospel. And he made fully known the mystery to all Gentiles, and that he finished his course because it was over. While the twelve apostles were going out and preaching to the twelve tribes of Israel and sealing up 144,000, Paul was out preaching to all the Gentiles that knew about Israel. And the fullness of the Gentiles had to come in before the remnant of Israel was saved. That already happened back then. Nobody's preached to you. And you don't even agree with the people who did preach to you. Because this is a joke today. Back then you had to have a preacher. You had to have apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, pastors, workers of miracles, helps, governments. You had to have all those things. You had to submit to your elders. You couldn't just have some personal relationship with Jesus. And somebody had to be sent. They had to be eyewitnesses to be sent to preach to you. They were eyewitnesses. Whenever they got Matthias, they didn't just say, oh, let's just, you know, whoever. They said, no, it had to have been somebody that was with them from the beginning of John the Baptist gospel. And it was eyewitnesses of it. They were the preachers. <clears throat> and how can you hear without a preacher? And how can they preach unless they're sent? You've been preached to by somebody who read a book for $5 and came here from Catholic and Protestant doctrine. Yeah, I keep explaining that one, Matt. Read Zechariah chapter 12, and then read Revelation chapter 1. It'll explain it to you. It's talking about the twelve tribes of Israel seeing him. The tribes of the earth would mourn because of him. That meant to say tribes of land. It's always talking about the land of Israel, the land of Judea. So what God, God exists now by your... It's the same God of the Bible, Mad, Mad Hatter. Same God. Same God of Abraham. I'm not against the Bible. I'm not against the Old Testament. I'm not against Yahweh. I'm not against anything. I'm not against the Law and the Prophets. I'm just telling you that it all already happened. That Jesus came and fulfilled the work and delivered everything back to the Father. The same Father that Abraham had. He delivered everything back to the Father. And today we should be worshiping the Father. Going straight to God. What a weird thing to say, Woodsy. God doesn't exist. We know that you don't care about any truthful statements because there's no way that you could know that, right? Paul was an eyewitness. He just didn't see Christ in the flesh. He saw him in the spirit because he was going to go to the Gentiles. Jesus didn't go to the Gentiles in the flesh. He only went to the Gentiles in the spirit. He had to call somebody else to go to the Gentiles, somebody who had not seen Jesus in the flesh. Gentiles weren't made nigh until the blood of Christ. Whenever Jesus Christ came to earth, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is still Old Testament. Jesus hadn't died yet. The death of the testator hadn't happened yet. So the New Testament hadn't begun. He wasn't allowed to talk to anybody else except for the Jews under the law until after he died. Because then he could be the perpetuation for sins. Then he could bring the other people in. Then he could bring the Gentiles in. So they never knew him after the flesh, and neither did Paul. That's why he was sent to the Gentiles. But he knew him after the Spirit, like he said. He was seen him last, as one born out of due time. Read 1 Thessalonians 4.17 I don't like stopping for one person and looking up one verse. I asked you, since I'm talking to a lot of people, Type in a couple words that it says. Instead of wasting your time and typing in, read 1 Thessalonians 4.17. Type in a couple words, and then I'll know what it says. 
I don't want to stop and grab a Bible. Read Revelation and know there is no pre-trib. I never said there was a pre-trib. Those who came out of great tribulation and loved not their lives unto the death. Pre-trib rapture is stupid. And the Holy Spirit already came. What are you talking about? It was poured out on the day of Pentecost. Are you trying to bait me or something? Old men like to do that, you know. They like to bait you with questions to show their wisdom and think that they're smarter than you. Because they automatically put you in a place beneath them because of their age. But yet they don't listen to people that are older than them. Smoking's a sin, so is watching lustful programs. Luckily Jesus ended sin, huh? Uh... Sorry, I'm getting talked out, guys. I've been blabbing, like, non-stop for... I'm slowing down, so I'm sorry. Um, yeah, the rapture already happened. After the believers fled into the wilderness. The Roman armies came in 66 AD. Jesus was actually seen on the clouds in 66 AD. It's written in history by eyewitnesses. And the believers fled into the wilderness for 1,260 days. It's the same time that the two witnesses preached. I know, for the ones of you who have been in here a long time, I know I'm repeating myself, but there's new people in, and I, I want to tell them too, so it's the only way to do it, you know? So, his ascension to heaven happened... His ascension to heaven happened after he rose from the dead in 30 AD. No, they saw him come back in the clouds with the armies and soldiers that were on fire. That's written in history. Uh, so, if Jesus paid for all sins. Oh, thank you, James, my friend. Jesus paid for all sins. Why aren't all people going to heaven now when they die? Because he didn't end evil. He only ended sin. Sin was condemned in the flesh. Adam and Eve didn't die the day that they ate the fruit. That fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil already existed before sin entered the world. It never said that Jesus would end sin, just that he would end evil. I mean, it never said that Jesus, see, I've been talking too long. It never said Jesus would end evil, just that he would end sin. So he ended the flesh, the sting of death, the grave. So now we have access to God and we can go straight to heaven whenever we die. You're not all sinners. Nobody's a sinner today. Nobody's a sinner, but Christians are evil, yes. So are Muslims and Jews. It's true. What is the mark of the beast? It was the law and the prophets. When the law was given. It said, bind this upon your hand and let it be for frontlets between your eyes. You can see Jews wearing it today. It's called Teflon today. It was called phylacteries back then. It was a little scroll that they put in a box with Torah whatever scriptures from the Torah they like. And they bind it upon their hand and their head. And Jesus Christ came to redeem them from the curse of the law, and he became the New Testament, where they had the laws of God inside of them, through the Holy Spirit. But those who rejected him and kept the law instead, they took the mark of the beast. He was the New Testament, which was the seal of God, which was the Holy Spirit, and they were keeping the Old Testament, which was added as a curse because of their transgressions. Yeah, it's I don't I don't judge anybody for what they do in the flesh, man. Uh, smoking or anything like that, that doesn't bother me. Lies bother me. Hurting women and children bothers me. Murder, theft, that kind of stuff bothers me. Deception, manipulation, but what people do in the flesh doesn't mean anything. Everybody just dies in the body. We are demons today, ardent soldier. God puts the soul of every man and woman.